It begins here, on this small and obscure tropical island. It's a strange story, and unforgettable. It's a love story like none other that has ever happened. We know only where it began. No one can know how or when, or where it will end. A few months ago, finding myself with an unexpected 10 days off, and sort of feeling a need for a rest and a complete change of scene, I took a plane down to San Salvador. From there, I short hopped to the island village of San Torrentado, where a friend of mine had assured me I would find a small, comfortable hotel on a picturesque bay. Everything he'd said was true. It was absolutely beautiful, isolated and quiet. And the food and air were clean and refreshing, as nature had intended them. Don Newland? Big word. Don Newland? Uh, no, John Newland. Oh, I'm sorry. My name's Bentley. I, I live here, the other side of the island. Oh, sir, Mr. Bentley. Thank you. One of the guests at the hotel said that he recognized you, said that you do a television program of your own back in the States, dealing with unexplainable things. Unexplainable? Well, many of them are unexplained. But no one can be sure whether any one of them is uh, unexplainable. I mean, they don't fit our rules of logic or fall within the scope of our scientific knowledge. Yet. But they have happened. Apparently. That's it. This isn't logical. It, it doesn't make any sense at all. This thing, whatever it is, has been on my mind. Well, I guess on my conscience to be more to the point. It began when a man by the name of Wilson, Philip Wilson, came down here from San Francisco for a vacation. Wilson had all the things that are supposed to make a man happy. Money, success, health, good looks. But I've never seen a guy who was more disenchanted with the world. And now, madam, if you'll give me your undivided attention. Oh, Mr. Bentley, you disappoint me. Did you escape the economic pressures of a complex society only to become a peddler of native artifacts to unwary travelers? Peddler? An artist reluctantly sells the fruits of his inspiration, and you call him peddler. Did you really make all these? Yeah, why are they any good? I'm not much of a judge. But I like this one. How much? How much do you like it? Bentley, you'll never be a star salesman. I don't want to. I've arranged things very carefully here. I lead the full life by not wanting anything I can't easily have, and I don't intend to let anything rock the boat. If it weren't for an occasional cigar and a few beers and a new pair of tennis shoes when these were out, I probably wouldn't even bother to make these. That's an interesting, if decadent, point of view. Mm. I like this little statue. About, um, twenty dollars worth? Twenty? Do you want to ruin me? Five bucks, not a penny more. All right. If you let me send you a good box of cigars when I get back to New York. Only if you take another one of these as advance payment. And remember, just one box. Don't last up my life. Charming, don't you think? No. No, well, he's not very charming. But he is good looking. Bartender. Will you get Mr. Wilson another one of whatever he was drinking, please? I didn't order that. The lady wanted to buy you a drink. 
I'm buying my own whiskey. Well, that was pretty nasty. She was only trying to be friendly. I didn't ask for her friendliness or yours, as I tried to make clear to you a few days ago. I know what you're afraid of. But Mrs. Garren isn't looking for another husband. She's not even taking alimony from the last. Money is the least of the things a woman takes from a man. What makes you so bitter, friend? Two ex-wives. What makes you so nosy, friend? Just a lively curiosity. I enjoy watching the human race. Especially when I see someone with a lemming complex. You know those little animals that run like crazy until they destroy themselves in the sea? They're so busy concentrating on whatever's driving them. They can't see or think about anything else. Bentley. Yeah? Tell the lady I'm sorry. Tell her yourself. my hand out to touch you, I'll touch nothing. You are real. You are too. I feel so peculiar. I know. Like a dream. No, no, not like a dream. Like, like something I thought would never happen, has happened. I've known you before, haven't I? I dreamed it a hundred times. You, this place, this moment. It was here. It was now. And then, afterwards, something happened. Something terrible. What are you afraid of? I don't know exactly. Of what's going to happen. What happens is up to us. This is no dream. Believe me. It's impossible. You just touch me. Look at me. Yes. But it's too quick. Seconds. What is time to do with us now? What do you feel? You know what I feel. It can't happen this quickly. It has. I'm frightened. Don't be. I'm frightened. Don't be. Possible is that we both should have come here to this little hotel in this out of the way place at exactly the same time. Santor and Dado. 
When I first saw it on a map, it was like something I remembered. Or a dream? I'd hate to tell you how long I saved for this dream. Delia. I'd like so much to know all about you. When you were vaccinated. What's your mother's name? How old you are? Do you like to go swimming? What do you do when you're not dreaming? I work. And darn hard. Doing what? This. Well, that's very pretty. I designed it. May I see it? What's this? A prayer bell. I have them in Tibet. When you hear the little noise, one remembers to offer prayers and thanks to heaven. That's lovely. Where do you live? St. Louis. What's your father's name? Henry. Henry, I love your daughter very much. And I'm asking you for her hand. Now, there's uh, one thing I think you ought to know about me, Henry. Statistically, I'm a bum risk. I've been married before. Twice. But neither one of them worked. But neither one of them was Delia. What is it, Delia? What did I say? Only that you said it. Just the way you said it before. And before and before. Morning for apologies. Come in. Would you like a drink? I didn't know she shared this place with anybody. What? Well, she didn't say anything, but I just assumed it. Who is she? Delia. Now, where is she? What in the world are you talking about? Gone anyway, there wasn't time. I'm sorry to say this, but I think you're in the wrong cottage. No, I just brought her here just a few seconds ago. Now, where is she? My friend, if you want to get drunk, that's your business, but leave me out of it. Goodbye, Mr. Wilson. Cottages. A, B, and C, only three. All right, we'll look at B next. But why should I wish to lie to you? We have so few guests in the hotel this time of year. You search every room in the hotel Open with your own door. eyes. Are you satisfied, senor? No, I'm not satisfied. You're not going to disturb Mrs. Garrett again. I'm going to keep on disturbing everybody in this place until I find her. But, senor Wilson, perhaps tomorrow morning. This is where I brought her. Some pardon, Senora. I tried to stop him. Are you going to tell me what happened to her? Is this sort of nonsense part of the regular service of the hotel? Are you going to tell me where she is? Please, Senor Wilson, believe me. There is no such young lady in the hotel. Look, I've had this cottage for a week. No one else has been here tonight or any other time. I never saw your Delia or whatever her name is. I never saw her. Well, I know someone who did. Con permiso. Good 
his clothes. Tell him. Senor, tell him who was here with me tonight. You just try to tell him she wasn't here tonight. I do not understand. You had dinner on the veranda, yes. And the food and the wine were just so, yes. But you were alone, senor. What? You said it was for two, and I served dinner for two. But I only charged for one. You were alone, senor. I only charged for one, senor Maduro. I only charged for one. Let me send a check you did not see. I suppose you don't remember this either, do you? Oh, but of course. It was left on the table. And who was wearing it? I cannot say. It was left on the table. It is all I know. Tell the truth. What? Senor! Tell the truth. Senor! What have you done with that? Well, Senor Wilson, if please. If you've done anything to her, I'll kill you. I swear it. I'll kill you. He went to see the United States Consul. He, he made such a fuss that they investigated. They checked all the steamship companies, with the freight lines. They checked every ship of every kind that was in these waters at that moment. With the scheduled and unscheduled airlines, the passport department in the States. But they found nothing. After all, they only knew her first name, Delia, and that she was supposed to live in St. Louis. Is that the end of the story? I only wish that it were. Well, after a few days, Wilson went to St. Louis and began searching for some trace of the girl. He checked all the jewelry manufacturers, all the designers, everything he and the detective agency had hired could think of. But no one had ever heard of such a girl. He tried to find out who made or sold bracelets like the one he had, but he didn't get anywhere. After months of searching, he came back here. What for? To wait for her, he said. He was sure she'd come back. That was eight years ago. He gave up everything back in the States and just stayed on here week after week, month after month, waiting. And he began to drink. He hardly ever spoke to anyone. And every night he went back to the place where he had insisted a thousand times he'd found her. I guess he described her to me a hundred times. What she looked like, what she wore, what they said to each other, the whole thing. He didn't seem to ever think about anything else. And he kept drinking to try to blot out his thoughts. One evening, just about a week ago, after this had been going on for almost eight years, I couldn't stand to see it happening any longer, and in my infinite wisdom. I decided to do something about it. I only meant to try to jolt him back to reality. Ever consider what you're doing to deliver with that stuff? You know what you're trying to do, don't you? You're trying to kill yourself in a nasty, messy, unattractive way by degrees. Well, of course, you want to be the local screwball. Do you know the natives even have a name for you? Senor Whiskey. Well, they don't mean it unpleasantly. They pity you, too. Senor Whiskey, the man that drinks all day and walks the woods all night looking for nothing. Well, if you want to kill yourself, at least do it in a nice, clean way and quickly. Oh, I know it takes a little courage, but I'm sure if you dig deep enough, you can find some. morning, the police found his body about two miles down the coast. The sailboat he'd been using had capsized about two miles up beyond the breakers. When they found him, this, this was clutched in his hand. The, the police listed it as 
accidental death. But what was he doing at three o'clock in the morning in a sailboat? I sent him out there. And then the next evening, as I was walking Wilson's route, as a sort of penance, thinking about what a fine specimen of humanity I am, that I can tell other people what to do with their lives. Hello. Delia? Yes. Is Delia? Delia Houston. From St. Louis? What does the hotel do? Give out a biography on each of its guests. Do you like it? I designed it. That's what I do. I design jewelry. Well, that's fascinating. That's quite a story, Mr. Bentley. Now you'd like me to explain. Can you? Well, I can make a guess. You felt terribly guilty about causing Wilson's death. Yeah. But on the first place, the police called it accidental death. And whether or not you contributed to that accident is a responsibility that you'll certainly have to settle with yourself. But as applies to the other thing, apparently your guilt, combined with the fact that you were so constantly exposed to Wilson's reliving his hallucination, caused you to visualize the same girl at the same time, at the same place, under the same conditions. Is that your explanation? Well, it's an explanation. There can be dozens of others. But to call it a psychic phenomenon... Delia? I'd like you to meet someone. This is Delia Houston, Mr. John Newland. How do you do? How do you do? Have you just arrived? Uh, yes. Yes, just this morning. Well, perhaps I'll see you at dinner. I look forward to that. You'll be a welcome addition. Thank you. When she was younger, about eight years ago, she told me she kept having a dream over and over again and that she was here. You can check. Everything I told you, Miss Hunter. A recurring dream about being here. Well, now, recurring dreams about romance are rather common to young girls, wouldn't you say? But if Delia did appear to Philip Wilson, and this would certainly seem to indicate that she did, Students of psychic phenomena would call it teleportation. That's how they would explain it. The transportation of the being from one place to another, in time and in space. In this case, into the future as well. But why did it happen? Well, maybe Philip Wilson and Delia are meant to meet that way someday. And perhaps they will, sometime, somewhere. You know, there are millions of people who do believe that we live other lives before and after this one. In a moment, a word about next week.